Hi everyone, this is Melinda from MTC Crew Designs. I'm a member of the Paint Couture Creative Team and welcome back to another fun tutorial. Today I'm gonna to show you how I created a vintage butterfly themed knife block. And I really love creating these because they can provide so much character in the kitchen and also serve as a cool conversation piece. Just a reminder, I will provide a full product list in the comments below. And I'll also include uh, my affiliate link in case you feel inspired to try out any of these products, or you can scan the QR code that'll be displayed in the top left corner throughout the video. So this is what the knife block looked like initially, and I've already used Fresh Start to clean the knife block and rinsed it thoroughly with water, and I've also given it a good scuff sand. So as you can see, I've already applied one decor mold at the front of the knife block, and next I'm going to apply a scroll from iFlex Wood Products. Uh, these are sold in a pair, and I'm applying one on each side of the knife block now. Next, I'm gonna use Simply White from the Chalk Style Paint Line, and I'll be applying this as my base underneath decoupage paper. I'll be putting decoupage paper on three sides here, and using white as your base color allows the colors of your decoupage paper to be at their brightest, actually. After that paint has dried, now I'm gonna use Paint Couture Satin Top Coat as my medium to apply the decoupage paper. I'm just painting on a thin layer of the satin top coat here. And then I'm gonna lay down the paper directly on top, just until it's positioned where I want it. This is the Dancing Butterfly Paper from Chow Bella. And now that I've got it exactly where I want it laid on the knife block, I'm going to seal it with another layer of satin top coat. Just being careful to make sure that I get it all the way to the edges, ensuring that it will stick all the way to the corners. Once I have a good layer of top coat there, I wanna make sure there are no air bubbles left underneath the paper. So I always use a silicone tool to slide out any kind of possibility of their air bubbles being left underneath there. And it's just smoothing the surface out. And I'm gonna do the same thing here now with a different paper. This is the Alter Ego paper from Digital Deco Designs. And I'm putting a portion of the paper on either side of the knife block using the same process and the same steps that we just used. To add some more dimension and texture, I'm using this stencil from Chow Bella. It's called Manuscript, and I'm gonna use it with the embossing medium to lay down kind of a look of font from maybe a newspaper type setting uh, just on the sides of the knife block here. And I'm using a plastic paint scraper and pressing firmly down, just being really careful not to move the stencil. And then you lift it up, straight up, when, uh, when you're done spreading your embossing medium. And I'm gonna do the same here at the bottom. But I wanted to show you that I made a little oopsie here and I got a little bit of the embossing medium somewhere where I didn't want it, but that's okay. So you can just um, easily wipe it off. It's best to wear gloves when you're doing this, uh, but yeah, easily wipe it off and you're good to go. So here I wanted to show you that um, since I'm planning to use this stencil on the other side, I wanted it to be kind of a clean surface. So I'm just using a wet wipe to wipe down the stencil before I toss it over to the other side of the knife block and use it again. So before I can use the embossing medium on this side, I wanna make sure that I get this decoupage paper off on the corners of where it's hanging over. So I'm just using a 220 sanding grip paper and um, taking off the edges of that decoupage paper so that it doesn't slip over onto the side where I'm about to use the embossing medium. And I'm doing the same thing that I did on the other side, just spreading the embossing medium in the areas that I want it. Also being really careful when you're lifting the stencil to just lift it straight off. Also, this is iFlex Wood Products number 2631. It's a keyhole that I put at the top of the knife block. And now, since I am a huge fan of texture, I am using Paint Couture's Crust, and I'm gonna place it in various spots throughout the knife block just to kind of give it an additional vintage -y aged look, um, kind of consistent with that vintage vibe and um, 
the texture just provides additional dimension that I love and it's gonna really play well when we start adding in more paint. So I like to use these little wooden sticks whenever I'm applying crust, just because it's usually in really intricate areas and I like to have a lot of control over where it's going. Uh, so the wood, wooden sticks work really well with that, uh, but you could use pretty much anything that you find useful in uh, just kind of applying it. And you can use as much or as little as you want. It's, it's your project, it's your creative brain here and you should do whatever makes you feel good. Next, I'm using Purple Haze from the Chalk Style paint line, and I'm using that to paint these decor molds that are Baroque frames. These will go around the butterfly uh, decoupage paper that we put on the side of the knife block. And I'm also using Duck Egg here. It's also from the Chalk Style line, and I'm just painting right over the manuscript stencil. And then I'm also going to use um, another brush. Uh, it's kind of a one and a half inch brush from Paint Couture. And I'm going to use a stippling uh, application for uh, applying the paint around the wooden molds. You just want to be really careful about coming in with paint. You don't want to have it dripping off of your brush. So that's why I do the stippling motion. And then also really careful here at the top of the knife block. So you don't want to come in with too much paint. Just kind of use it sparingly and you can always add more if you need to. So now I'm using Polynesian Pink. It's from the Mineral Paint line from Pink Couture and it is a really vibrant, gorgeous pink, but I'm also doing a stippling motion here as well just to get in and around that decor mold. And with the crust texture in the front, you just wanna do a stippling motion to make sure you're getting in between every little part of that uh, crust. And we're moving to the back now where I am putting more duck egg over the crust that I applied here in the back. And now we will change it up with Admiral Blue, also from the Chalk Style line. And this is where it gets kind of fun for me because I really like using my painter sponge. And um, I just put a little bit of water, very, very little water. I use the paper towel often to kind of dab it just to make sure I'm not going in with a whole lot of water. And I'm just painting from my lid. I just get a little bit of the Admiral Blue. I'm even kind of taking some of it, some of it off onto the paper towel. And then I'm gonna kind of do a kind of a spongy dabbing motion here. Um, just kind of pressing down gently. Um, the harder you press down, the firmer you press down, the more paint it will release onto your piece. Um, so it's just kind of your preference how you want to apply it. But this is one of my favorite ways to apply paint is using this sponge. And I'm just going to go all the way around and kind of apply it where I want it. And as you can see, it's putting some dimension here. You can see the stencil is coming, um, coming to life here. I'm going to the back and I'm going to put a little bit over the crust. And, um, and like I said, it's just your preference, however much you want to put down. I'm going to cover the top of the knife block. I like to use it as a kind of a dry brush effect as well. Using the sponge is a lot of fun for me. Also, if you are going to attempt to paint a knife block, I would recommend getting a Lazy Susan because it does make the job so much easier. Since I have such a deep love of metallic paint, I decided to use Royal Silk over the Baroque frames that we've already painted, just to give them a little bit of an edge. And now I'm using Purple Haze again to go over the Polynesian Pink, also in a stippling motion, just to give it additional dimension here. Next, I'm gonna do something really fun. I'm gonna use my painter sponge again, and I'm going to use the antique gold metallic paint from the Luxe Metallic line. And I'm going to cover the sponge with the paint, and I'm going to glide it across the raised stencil. And I'm not pushing down at all, I'm just gliding. Just gliding so that we're careful to only get the gold paint on the stencil. It's a raised stencil, so if I'm not pushing down, we're just making sure that we put the gold paint on the stencil. And it's okay if it gets on the edges of the knife block. I think it gives it a little bit more character, uh, something a little bit more glam and vintage-y fun to look at. And next we're going in with the green iris metallic paint. This is a really pretty sheer uh, colored metallic paint and it's kind of a greenish color um, but a really pretty kind of holographic green 
Um, but yeah, I love using this one. I use it a lot in my projects and it gives so much dimension. So I'm putting it in to the front of the knife block over the crust, over the keyhole and um, keyhole mold. And we're just doing a stippling motion because I just want to put additional dimension here. And I'm putting it over the top of the knife block. And I like it so much that I just decided to cover the top of the knife block completely. It's a really pretty green. It looks like holographic, like space odyssey effects. It's so pretty. And I'm just dry brushing it now at this point. I really like the effect. I love how it glistens in the light. And I'm just dry brushing it along the edges of the knife block now. Okay, so now we have our Baroque frames that need to go onto the knife block and I'm gonna use tight bond again to put the glue here on the back of the frames. I'm going to set that and let them dry. And I'm going in with Gold Mine. It's another Lux metallic paint and it's really bright and vibrant. So I like the pop that it gives here over the butterfly mold and over the keyhole. It's just, just additional dimension, additional fun, something really cool to look at. And I decided to use that same color over the Baroque frames. Just done the raised edges of the frames. And last but not least, we have to seal our project. So I'm using um, Extreme Guard and Gloss to seal the entire knife block just for added durability. And here we are. I call this creation the dancing butterfly. I think it looks so magical and lovely, full of color and metallic shine with just a bit of a vintage vibe. She's shiny and sparkly, and I think she'll provide a lot of joy to anyone's kitchen. Let me know what you think in the comments below, okay? And as a reminder, if I've inspired you to try any of Paint Couture's amazing products, you'll find my affiliate link in the comments below, or you can scan this QR code in the top left corner of the screen. If you've enjoyed today's video, please remember to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe so that way you don't miss out on any of the amazing content that our creative team is putting together for you. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great one.